What's going on everybody? Ice Crab here today back with a brand new Dragon Age Origins video. We're really grinding out this Origins story. Though to be fair, the real story is about to start right now. Okay. I just did some work in the cold. In the middle of winter, it bothers me quite a bit. Anyways, let's go. Hold on. Hold on. We gotta have a kick it and have a chat with our new friend well, here. Here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. Ah, uh, you dreamed of the blight? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day... The rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was gray and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. Um... And this made you want to help. In my dream, I fell. Or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? Uh, I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Okay, so we're not going to bore you guys with a extended conversation. So usually what I would do is just sit there and exploit all the options. But because it's a series, I'm going to now go out and do something. And then we're going to do a little bit of talking in between each one. So we're going to... Indeed. <sighs> yes. Yes. That is my lineup. Let us go. Where are we going first? Uh, man, I did not really think this one through. I think we should head towards... Alright, this is my order. We're gonna do Redcliffe, the Elves, the Mages, and then the Dwarves. Because the Dwarves is the hardest one. It's also the longest one, I think. I gotta kill these guys They're in the way. Kills. Any loot? Trap. So simple to see, really. Okay, that's all the loot. Okay. Move out. Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Uh, yeah, what's up, man? Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon exactly? Uh, he, he raised you, I think. I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle, and she died when I was born. 
Our Lehman took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. Um... So you're a royal bastard. Ha! Yes, I guess it does it, that. I should use that line more often. I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlay, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. That is an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall. And it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The owl came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually he just stopped coming. Um, but you are an heir, right? Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Al Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Kaelin's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Great Wardens. As you command, my prince. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. Alright, moving on then. Uh, actually, hold on, there's like some elf root. Oh, it's dead root. Ew. Anyway, onward. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? Yeah, uh, an important business to see Arl Eamon. Oh. Then you, you don't know. Has nobody out there heard? He's sick. He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. Ew. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on. What is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother. He's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. Off we go. It's 
Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long, if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. Uh, not all of us. So, you are a Grey Warden as well? Is it possible we've met? You seem very familiar. Uh, Ben Tegan. Uh, yeah, t t Ben Tegan. That's you. <laughs> Tyrion Coosland. Ah, yes, that's it, exactly. A pleasure to meet you, indeed. Though I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. I can help you take drive them back. There are no darkspawn here, and nothing to gain. It is a fool's errand. Uh, if there's a chance to rescue the Arl, we must try. Perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. All right, let's do it. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Bye bye. Stan approves, really. Let us pray. You are a stranger amongst us, yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. We are most grateful to you. I cannot stand idly by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a man of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. How awful this must be for you all. Is this everyone who's left? All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Uh, yeah, a blessing would be nice. Of course, child. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou <laughs> Going who too hardcore on the floor, dude. That is just too hardcore. Blessed art thou <laughs> who seeks his return. Blessed is the prophetess, <laughs> his daughter, sacrificed to the holy flame. May the chant reach the Maker's ears, and tell him of our contrition. That's brutal. That's too hardcore. You have a quest. What is that quest? Sorry. Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Uh, no, what's wrong? Those, those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her scream. Screaming all the time, everywhere. How terrible, you poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. Don't worry, I'll look for him. You will. Thank you so much. Please find him. I'm so scared, Father. Bye bye, I'm another plus one. We're going to be smashing by the end of this first mission. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man. Alright, let's just keep going. Shadow Vice Crab, keep playing the game. Still 
no sign of them coming back from the castle, Murdoch. Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want a surprise attack before the sun goes down. Yes, sir. What should we do until then? Pray, and hope for a miracle. Sir. So. so you're the Grey Warden, are you? I heard they all died with the King. Uh, you heard wrong. Uh... Yeah, you heard wrong. So you say. A damn Kunari could walk up and say he was a Grey Warden. I wouldn't know the difference. That much is clear. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Well, we do want to help however we can. You can trust us. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. Uh, yeah, iced crab. Fair enough. What can I do for you? Uh, what can I do for you? We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. Uh, I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Yeah, uh, who are huh? you? Who is that? What do you want? I've been through enough. Just come on, man. Mm. All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. I'm going inside. See what happens. Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? Iced Crab Grey Warden Van Tegan. A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen. Though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Yeah, Mil Melissa needs your help, man. Why should I help Murdoch when he won't help me? Hmm? My girl, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. I'll rescue her. It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. I'm the hero. Provided any of us live through the night. What about the militia? If you look for Valena, I'll reopen the smithy and make some repairs for the militia. I can do that much. Okay, I'll do it, man. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. Promise. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Is this a promise we will not keep? What's this? I said nothing to you, human. Right then. It seems I have some work to do, relighting the forge, and I suppose 
I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm gonna get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Stunts a dick. He's gonna go too, but it's gonna take a little bit. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll send one of my men to inform Bantigan the militia is ready for battle. Okay, um, what else? We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot, but he flat out refuses. Tell me about him. He's a trader, a dwarf, lives near the lake, Locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. I want to discuss something else. Uh, now, carry on. Right. Let's hope we see morning. We'll be fine, dog. Hold on. He's just over this way. Uh, yeah, pick it. What? Alright, break it down. Haha! <laughs> yes! That is the way. We are over, so we're gonna get him and end Wonderful. the video. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. Didn't mean any harm. Apology accepted. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now get out. Uh, he, uh, Murdoch needs you, dog. So what? You recruiting for him? I'll tell you what I told Murdoch. I'm not risking my neck for this town. Uh, yeah, you will. You're gonna die here or out there, so... So, that's what it comes down to, huh? <clears throat> Fine. I'll go. If you want me out there so badly. Good man. <clears throat> Spoken like someone who doesn't know me very well. Go tell Murdoch he won. And I better see you out there in the square when those creatures come. Alright. Alright, so that's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please like and comment in the comment section. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Make sure to follow me on all social media at TS underscore Ice Trap, especially Twitter. And if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitch at the Spartan underscore Ice Trap, where you can catch all my live streams. Currently, right now, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube so you can monetize these videos and make better content for you. So please hit that sub button. And I hope to see you all in the next video.